We've got ourselves a bit of a dilemma for today in MLB DFS, and that's because I want to use all the good players. And to get all the good players in my lineup, I've got to pay the piper at some point. There are really good pitchers for today, because a lot of times it's the top end of the rotation, back to the top end for these teams. So we got aces. We also have a game at Coors Field. That sets up pretty well for stacking. So I have to decide, how do I properly balance that? How can I get the stud pitchers that I want while also not reducing myself to, you know, just the, the scrubs at Coors Field or stacking elsewhere. That's a tough, to, tough thing to balance for today. We're going to break down a way I think you can do so without limiting yourself in DFS for today. So let's dive on in and get you set for Thursday's slate. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network in numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to break down Thursday's eight game main MLB DFS slate with lots lock set for 6 35 p.m. Eastern for tonight. So lock is at 6 35 p.m. Eastern. If you are a procrastinator, make sure you get those things in before at that time for today in Kansas City for the Royals and the Tigers. Winds are out to center at 11 miles per hour. Upgrade batters for the Royals and Tigers a bit there. It is 59 degrees at Coors Field. That's not great, but it's also not terrible, I would say. Winds are in from left at 12 miles per hour. It's a bit of a downgrade for hitters from typical Coors Field. I'll still be stacking there as discussed, but I would downgrade it a bit from typical expectations because of the lower temperature and the wind. As far as overall temperatures for today, the band of temperatures, like the the, the split between the top and the bottom end, not all that large. The coldest temperature for today, 58 degrees. That is uh, at Coors Field. The highest temperature, if the roof is open, is in Arlington for the Rangers and Angels. Uh, and it could be 12 degrees of difference between the top end and the bottom end. So overall, we can downplay weather a bit. It will still ma matter for sure. And we should still emphasize it, but not as big of a thing as it was the first couple of games. We'll dive into the pitching preview here in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast. Because it's not just the solo shot every weekday. We've got PGA podcasts. We've got UFC. We've got NHL still cooking along as well. And NASCAR as well. So, Plenty of good stuff here on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Search for that wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Hey, sports fans, one final reminder that there is no better time than today to sign up for FanDuel Fantasy. If you've been listening to this podcast, considering DFS, do so right now. All you got to do is deposit a minimum $10 in your FanDuel DFS account and you will be instantly rewarded with two free vouchers. This is a limited time offer, so be sure to deposit now and play for free. Head over to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel Fantasy app today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Pitching preview for this Thursday main slate. Shohei Otani is the highest salaried pitcher on FanDuel, checking in at $10,800. We've got Walker Bueller at 10 5 Joe Musgrove is 10 3 Kyle Gibson facing the Marlins is $9,800. Kevin Gaussman against the Yankees at 96 Sandy Alcantara facing the Phillies, $9,300. And then Charlie Morton rounds at the top group at $9,000. Nobody else in the 8000 range. So Morton is the final guy before there's a pretty steep drop-off. Looking at the top end here, I don't think we have a choice but to have Walker Bueller as our top-ranked guy for tonight, just straight up. He is at home. That's great. He's facing the Reds. That's even better, which checks two massive boxes for DFS. The pitch count for Bueller his first time out was 78. That's not great, but it's also not, like, super concerning. I'm projecting Bueller tonight for 90 pitches, which puts me at 6.19 strikeouts for today. That is not as high as some other guys on this slate, but the win odds here are very high. The projected runs allowed are very low, and those two things do matter as well. Bueller in his first start this year, he was fine. He went five innings, five strikeouts, two walks. That was against the Rockies, so not a great offense, but they might be better than the Reds, and that game was in Denver as well, whereas this one is in Los Angeles. Bueller has a 3.68 skill interactive ERA over his past 17 starts, with fewer forcing fastballs, his strikeout rate is 26%. He has tremendous batted ball data. So I don't think Bueller is the highest upside guy on this slate. There are some other guys here with more strikeout juice and stuff like that. But Bueller is the whole package. He is good in every area. And that's great for cash games. So for tournaments, I'm open to pivoting. 
But for cash games, I do think that Walker Bueller is going to be your top guy for today. But at the second slot, I'm going to give Charlie Morton the slight edge over Shohei Otani. Both these guys are on the road, and that's why they're not in the same tier for me as Walker Bueller, and neither has a perfect matchup. I just like Morton's batted ball profile more, and that will put him over Otani for me in this two spot at $9,000. Morton did keep his sinker usage low in his first start at 7.7%. I obviously love that because it leads to more strikeouts and fewer sinkers. It could lead to a dip in his batted ball numbers, though. We've seen Morton doing this over his past 10 starts now, and in those 10 starts, he's still letting up just a 28% hard hit rate. That is the best mark on this slate in each guy's most relevant sample by a wide margin. The fly ball rate for Morton is still 35%. That's a good number, too. So the guy is elite in these numbers, despite making changes that could hurt him there and improve his strikeout numbers. Gotta like that for sure. He's facing the Padres here. They have just a 156 ISO against righties based on their current active roster since the start of last year. Their 21% strikeout rate is low, which keeps Morton from being the no-brainer top option for today. But the rest of the profile for the Padres offense right now without Tatis is pretty underwhelming. I would not be opposed to Morton over Bueller in a tournament because he's $9,000. That gives you more flexibility at hitter, which I will definitely take here. So if I want to jam in as many Coors bats as I can get, Charlie Morton to me is the guy who best enables me to do that without sacrificing upside at pitcher. As far as the guys below $9,000, I don't feel good about anybody, honestly. And it's not because of the floor. I don't honestly care too much about floor with value guys i want upside and we need strikeouts here to hang with bueller otani morton alcantara guys like that and not a lot of guys down here have that so i personally am not likely going below morton for my lineups for tonight but if you want a value guy my favorite option would be yoan adon adon is a rookie for the nationals he made one start last year and one this year the one this year did not go well. He walked four guys in four to third innings, less than ideal, which just three strikeouts, let up four earned runs. He is kind of interesting, though. He spent most of last year in high A. He had a 12.6% swinging strike rate there, moved up to double A, made three starts there. His swinging strike rate in double A was 20.5%. Interesting. In his one start in the majors last year, Adon came up nine strikeouts in five and a third innings. So, he can get strikeouts. He has path to, a path to a ceiling. It's a question of whether the walks will wash them all away, be it due to pitch count or whatever it may be, getting chased in the game. And Adon is built up, too. He went 86 pitches in his first start this year, which is one of the higher marks for anybody on this slate in their first start for the season. The projection systems don't like him, and that's why I'm lower here, because I trust those a lot. His swinging strike rates in that first start was legitimately bad. So... I'm not leaping to use a Don, but he's facing the Pirates. They are a low power team, which means if he does walk some guys, the odds that the Pirates make him pay for those mistakes are lower. I'm not super jazzed trying to recommend him here because I do want to recommend guys I feel okay using, and I, I'm not probably going to get there with a Don. But if you really, really want to spend down, a Don at $6,700 would be my preference for doing so for today. So for me, it'll mostly be the high salary guys, Bueller, Otani. I think Morton will likely be the highest uh, exposure guy for me tonight. But if you do want to spend down, do you want to go nuts at Coors Field? I do think that Yoan Adon is a guy who could allow you to do so while still having at least some upside in that profile. So let's move now to the stacks and talk about that game at Coors Field where I love both sides for today. They're going to be the top stacks for me, the top two stacks both in this game. The preference is the Rockies, so let's start there. They're facing Justin Steele, who lets up a lot of balls in play. Steele changed his approach in his first start this year, where he threw a lot more sliders and fewer curveballs. And it did seem to help because Steele had five strikeouts to one walk over five innings. That's a pretty decent start. But his swinging strike rate there was just 5.2%. Got a ton of called strikes that really swung things up for him. So I'm not convinced he'll keep that hot start going. That's especially true when he has to go to Coors Field. He has a 4.67 skill interactive ERA in his 10 starts for the Cubs, a 21% strikeout rate, and a 10% walk rate. The one key thing for Steele that he has done is he had pretty good batted ball data, but balls in play in general, regardless of the quality, will kill you in a park like this. Steele should have let up plenty of those based on that low strikeout rate. The Rockies 
not as good as they were a year ago against lefties. They lost Trevor Story. I know they add Chris Bryant, Randall Gritchick and stuff. So like I downgrade them, but with Bryant and Gritchick there, they're still good enough to take advantage here. So I do think the Rockies, to me, the top stack of the day. But looking at this offense here uh, with the with the Rockies, I think the guy I'm most into is Connor Joe. He's a guy who I would say benefits most from facing a lefty. Joe has been hitting leadoff against lefties this year, and he's got some power. 220 ISO for him against lefties since the start of last year. It's a small sample for Joe because he got hurt, but I think he's legit. Uh, between him, you got CJ Crone, Brendan Rogers, Chris Bryant, Randall Gritchick. You've got enough guys here who can bang even with Trevor Story being gone. So I do like the Rockies for today. And also if Garrett Hansen plays, I put him on that list as well. So the Rockies, despite in my mind downgrading them, I do still like them a decent amount against lefties, especially in this matchup. The other side of this game is the Cubs. They are also acceptable. I would put them, I would say like a half tier below the Rockies for today. They're facing Kyle Freeland. Freeland is, I think, a good pitcher, but is he good enough to overcome Coors Field? Sometimes, yes, which is a testament to him. But on the baseline, it's harder for me to avoid him here because most pitchers are not good enough to avoid at Coors Field. We've seen Freeland working in a slider more often recently. And that's something he kept up in his first start this year. If you look at the 13 starts dating back to last year, where Freeland has thrown that slider more, his skill interactive ERA is 4.03. That's pretty good with a 24% strikeout rate. He's not quite at the spot where you don't want to stack against the guy, even at Coors Field, but he's getting closer. And that's especially true with his batted ball data. So he's got good batted ball data too. The issue here is how righty heavy the Cubs are. We talked about this yesterday against a righty, how they had a lot of righties in there. And that's works the other way here for today. In this spot, they're going to have a ton of righties out there to face Freeland. And last year, righties had a 487 slugging percentage against Freeland. The ISO for them was over 200. So if you're facing a more lefty heavy team, I might be okay pedaling back, pulling back the reins here and not going hard at the opposing team but this isn't that spot. So I think it's very much in our best interest to stack the Cubs here, sticking specifically to all their righty bats. You're going to have plenty of guys to choose from here. So I would say stick with the righties on the Cubs and feel good about that. The obvious one here is Seiya Suzuki. I shouldn't need to talk you into him, so just use him. But the guy I am most interested in here, relative to the public probably, is Patrick Wisdom. He's got 125 plate appearances against lefties since the start of last year. But his ISO is 266 with a 49% fly ball rate. This guy is obliterating baseballs, and he is $3,000 potentially batting third at Coors Field. Gotta like that for sure. So Patrick Wisdom, to me, a focal point for this slate. Frank Schwindel, Wilson Contreras, the other guys would be pretty high on here. And honestly, even like Nick Madrigal has shown a bit more upside against lefties. So Madrigal, not my kind of guy for DFS typically. I might be a bit more lenient on that today because he has actually shown a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of uh, extra base upside against lefties. So again, Suzuki, Wisdom, the key, the key focal points here, Schwindel, Contreras, Madrigal, also guys on the list for sure. I would downgrade Ian Happ against lefty versus where you have him versus a righty. For this third slot in the stacking section, the best option in a vacuum is the Dodgers. They've got a good matchup. They're a very good offense, but With Coors being so heavily featured and how I want to spend up a pitcher, I want to talk about a stack that can provide more value. Maybe you can use them in tandem with a Coors stack in order to get to Bueller, get to Otani. With Morton, I think you can get there regardless. But let's just talk about a team you could use for salary relief. And to me, that's the Royals. They're facing Casey Mize, and Mize is still in the process of figuring things out. And there's talent there, so you don't want to write things off by any means, but he's still in that process. I love the talent. So I was curious about what Mize would do at the in his first start this year. And he did lean heavily on his four-seam fastball. It didn't help much, though. He had just two strikeouts in five innings. He allowed four in runs, a lot of hard contact. That was against the White Sox, and they are a much better offense than the Royals. But the Royals do at least have some individual players you like. You don't like the hole. The hole for the Royals is not great offensively, but individually, they're not terrible. Mize has led up a 42% fly ball rate since he started to lean more on that forcing fastball with a 38% hard hit rate and a low strikeout rate. That is a great recipe for stacking. So I think on a slate where I'm hunting for value, I can be more lenient in stacking a low upside team 
because they have individuals who are high upside. And that's kind of, I think, the the space the Royals live in for this year is the hole's not good, but there are some guys I'm okay with. And I think that on this slate, I do like that. Obviously, there's Bobby Witt. You can get upside via value there. He's not the hottest start, but he's got power. He's got speed. I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about that part. There's also Alberto Mondesi at $2,800. Mondesi does not have an extra base hit yet. And he's still bad in terms of play discipline, but 195 ISO against righties last year, he had better marks against lefties, but I'm still good with him, even batting lower in the order. 195 ISO with his speed definitely does work for me. So even just against righties, I think that Mondesi is a guy I feel very good about. So Bobby Witt, Adalberto Mondesi, a couple of uh, you know lower salary guys in, below $2,800 who can help you fit in more core stacks. So You can go with a full Royal stack if you want, but if you want a high upside one-off to save salary, Witten Mondesi would be the guys I would turn to there. Let's go now to things to watch for tonight. I think the big pitch count note for tonight is Luis Severino. Severino got a lot of strikeouts in his first start this year. He looked good, but he went just 65 pitches. His swing striker was 7.7% as well. I'm projecting Severino at 75 pitches for tonight. I'd expect the Yankees to play things pretty slow in his buildup here, given how much time he has missed. I'd expect that eventually we'll be on Severino in the decently near future if he keeps getting the strikeouts that he showed in his first start. But I want the pitch count to increase first. So Severino, to me, despite being a value, is not a guy I want to turn to, especially against this very potent lineup, because I'm worried about pitch count and the matchup doesn't help either there. Let's talk about the Dodgers here. I mentioned them before as being a stacking option. They're facing Luis Sessa as a starter, but I'm guessing he will be just an opener where he will pitch an inning or two and then give way to Reaver San Martin as being the, the bulk guy for tonight. San Martin is a lefty, 4.68 skill interactive ERA in his three career starts. Decent with bad at ball suppression, but I do think the, the Dodgers grade out well here. I'd rank them below the two Coors teams among the higher salaried stacks, but as you're differentiating, as you want to mix up your lineups, I think the Dodgers also do work for sure. If you go Morton and you've got some some room to spare, totally okay with the Dodgers here. Finally, I don't mind some one-offs in the Nationals. It has to be one-offs because they're like a more extreme version of the Royals where like, yeah, they got some guys, but the, the whole thing is bad. So I can't stack them probably, but I can get some one-offs here. They're facing JT Brubaker. He can struggle with his bad at ball profile, and we saw that on opening day against the Cardinals. So basically what I'm saying is Juan Soto's in play. Like that's kind of the TLDR here. So Soto's in play. I don't mind Josh Bell, Nelson Cruz, Kyber Ruiz. Those guys could work as well if you need them. But it's mostly just you can use Juan Soto. Maybe you can squeeze out a stack from Bell, Cruz, and Ruiz. But uh, probably more so looking for one-offs here for the Nationals because the rest of the lineup does matter as well. Let's finish up with some home run calls for this slate, the boring one. How could I not go with the Chris Bryant revenge game? It is Chris Bryant against his former team at Coors Field facing a lefty. I mean, narratives, baby. We can't fade the narratives. So Chris Bryant, the boring home run call for today. The fun one, I'm going to go with Andrew Benintendi, which is probably wild to hear. But Benintendi has been showing some glimpses this year of what made him such an elite prospect. I loved tracking Andrew Benintendi when he was at like double A and he had like more triples than strikeouts at one point uh, in his double A career. He's not striking out. He's lofting the ball enough. And like, I kind of think I'm buying back into Andrew Benintendi. So the boring home run call is Chris Bryant. The fun one, Andrew Benintendi, he's $3,100. Kind of don't hate it. So as, as a Royal stack, if it gives me an excuse to buy into a guy I used to adore from a prospecting perspective, I'll do it. So the home run calls for today, Chris Bryant and Andrew Benintendi. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. But again, we got a lot of good stuff here on the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, NHL, USC, and NASCAR still to come throughout the remainder of this week. So search for the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts, hit subscribe to get these podcasts as they go up each and every day to give you more time to listen to these podcasts and get your lineups in before lock because the shelf life is obviously low. So you want to get it as soon as possible. Search for that. Hit subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever it may be. 
If you have questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your Thursday MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again on Friday to close out the week. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.